dedicating the, his entire weekend to seva but the rest of the week to regular life like as we know it if you can call it regular so i was curious you know what drives him and week after week without break it's easy for people like me whose entire life is only doing this so we don't have any other life so people think it's great i don't think that is great but people who are embedded in this world with all the worldly responsibilities and they are able to dedicate time unadulterated time of two days every week week after week to this cause of service i think that is greatly appreciated ramakrishna paramahamsa would always say that we all should be like the lotus leaf in the water but not affected by it and this thing i thought was like that so i asked him ye sab kyon kar rahe ho aapke inspiration kahan se aata hai what is it where how do you do this here he is very simplistic he had never thought about it honestly that's a beauty you know, of these extraordinary people he said several years ago he comes from a very ordinary maybe i can't say ordinary ordinary in terms of incomes that's a better way of putting it but extraordinary human being comes from a very ordinary typical lower middle class or maybe low just upper a low upper lower class if you can put it that way family very difficult to make ends meet he was studying and knowing the delhi winters very cold and as a young man of 19 20 21 like any other young man of that age wants to have a nice jacket so whenever you go out you see all these young people wearing flashy jackets so he also like felt he wanted one so he went and asked his father mujhe bhi ek jacket chahiye khareed ke dijiye father said mere paas to itna paisa nahi hai mushkil hoga mujhe dekh rahe ho kitna mushkil hai hame jina hi mushkil hai isme how do you get such a costly jacket and the boy never trouble he knew the challenge the family was having so he went about his life but seeing his family going through this much he decided to start working part time ka thoda kuch tuitions uh, 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 bachon ke liye tuitions karke karte karte thoda paisa kama pata and he would give most of the money to his father to help the family but a small amount he would save he told his father i am saving some small amount isi tarah do teen saal went by and then finally he decided he had enough money to buy a jacket so this young man goes sarojini nagar market buys a nice jacket and starts sort of about to rain so he gets into an auto and as he's going home he, he also is feeling cold the auto driver is also feeling cold the auto driver starts shivering in the cold this young man looks at the auto driver and unhesitatingly without even thinking twice removes his, the removes the jacket from the bag and simply gives it to the auto driver and say hey pehen lo ye jacket aapke liye hai thandi ma acha lagega so he just gives it to him doesn't even think twice forgets the incident but comes home and his father asks him i know you saved money and you went to buy a jacket jacket kahan hai and the, the boy tells his father mai sara jina ghar mein jacket kharida lekin wapas aate hue ye sab he told him the incident and said kya hua and and all that and then he explained to him the auto driver was very cold and so i had to give the jacket to him life and ton and i asked him why is that incident important to you and why are you doing what you are doing and this young man's answer i still feel this each one of us the very fact that you are attending this session itself means you are all in this journey each one of us is in our own journeys each of our journeys are very important and special we may not recognize the speciality of it in this particular case this young man had not recognized till i spoke to him and he said that instant i never felt i'm giving away something but when i saw the joy in that auto driver's face and when he wore it and he felt warm that joy was so gratifying the joy was so fulfilling i could never take my mind off that that instant of joy so for him he giving something to the auto driver was not so important but he getting something back in return that extraordinary sense of fulfillment joy peace something settled feeling inside which is difficult to describe but very easy to experience because most of us are from that space was something extraordinary and then he told me if this is what one gets 
in giving, then giving should be part of my life. And he said, coming from this background, I right now cannot give of myself so completely that I cannot ignore my family and its challenges and difficulties. So five days a week, he goes to his company and he works. But sixth and seventh day, he says it is only for seva. And he joins this organization, goes to the slums in Delhi, teaches young children little education, math, science. Padate, padate, he feels very happy, comes back. And not a single week is broken, remember. Today, Saturday, Sunday means we have, we have built a construct, a westernized construct, where a week has to be seven days. In that five days, we dedicate to our professional existence. Two days is personal. We separate it out. And those two days is for our family. And I'm not saying family is wrong or another is wrong. Don't get me wrong. We're so clear that we go out, we go out to eat, we watch a movie. Nowadays, COVID has changed all that. But thankfully, in one sense, it has changed substantially. In a negative sense, it has also affected us in many ways. But we think that this week is dedicated for our personal life, for enjoyment, for fulfillment in that space. But this young man has never, young, maybe 30, 31, we have got two year old baby, he told me. Well, recognizing the need for family and supporting it, he sees his call to society, not as seva and doesn't glorify it and amplify it but just sees it as an opportunity in those two days to feel satisfied and nice about himself. Now, how do you describe this? Do you call this seva? Do you call this something deeper? What is the lesson we can all learn from this incident? And that started me thinking, and you know, I, I, many times when I look at all this around the world and try to connect it to some several research that keeps happening, when we, we all come to the conclusion that, you know, service has to be extraordinary. It should be something which is led by some great uh, action by somebody sitting on the top. When, when we look at um, somebody gave away 94% of his wealth to philanthropy, we think, what a wonderful human being. But this young man, unsung, unspoken about young man, giving away something like two days every week of his life. It's a wonderful uh, cause that he's taken up education of children deprived of education in this country of ours. How do you classify it? How do you even see that as leadership even? Does it even, is it even leadership? So as I start going deeper into this, and he sees it very ordinary. It's a very casual thing, very dismissive about his own work. I see two extraordinary things. Two extraordinary things with Swami Vivekananda, maybe nine, 80, late 1890s, describes it, describes it very simplistically and says, he calls it just servant-based leadership. And many people have misunderstood this context of servant-based. It's as though about exercising leadership like a servant. No, no, no. Servant-based is actually an, ext an, an amplified uh, personification of a service attitude in a human being where you serve like a servant. The word servant is seen very demeaning. It is about the spirit of service in a human being. And you serve. And this leadership in the late 90s, Swami Vivekananda used it for the first time. It's actually in an in a, in a article he writes. In a speech also he says. But you know, so the sad part of our nation is when Swami Vivekananda describes a servant based leadership, we are a little slow to pick it up. We say, Vivekananda is a sannyasi. We say, Karma Yoga is a very important thing. We say, Karma Yoga is a very important thing. We say, Karma Yoga is a very important thing. We say, Karma Yoga is a very important thing. We say, Karma Yoga is a very important thing. We say, Karma Yoga And so, when Greenleaf wrote about it in 1930 for the first time in his book, we thought he was the person who described this act this kind of leadership in the service space. In the 60s, actually Harvard paper came out and then we all think Harvard is the institution which spoke a lot about servant-based leadership. But I beg to disagree. I still believe like in my own book, I write about this. And I believe this very fundamental thinking of serving even before thinking about yourself is a very powerful Indian construct. And the spiritualization of this is reflected beautifully in Karma Yoga in the Bhagavad Gita. 
and in a very practical sense on Vivekananda, because he was all his Vedanta was all practical, talks about it. So to me, the Bhagavad Gita is not just a religious book or a religious treatise that is being made out to be. It is far bigger, far deeper, and far wider than all that. It is possibly in one if you wear a lens of a leadership expert that I would like to see it from. I'm not saying other other views are not appropriate, they're perfectly appropriate and maybe better. But the way I see it is if you can, if you want to ask somebody to live the spirit of Bhagavad Gita, then you're asking him to live the spirit of leadership itself. And there is no greater application than that in the way we look at service and the leadership that emerges from this spirit of service. So all this I'm saying to connect the rootedness of this concept in the very cultural understanding of India itself. It is a part, so much a part of our DNA that we don't even separate it out. Like this young man doesn't separate his existence from the way he lives on weekends. And the, he even told me, every weekend I look forward to it because that is where my energy comes from. Look at the power, the inner energy. And Vivekananda describes it so beautifully. And I think the rest of the 30, 40 minutes I would like to share how Swami Vivekananda might have seen this leadership emerging from the spirit of service. Because everything I say or think is completely driven by the foundational understanding of mind of Swamiji and his message. So he was once asked by several of his close disciples in a conversation. They said, you keep saying, seva karna chahiye, seva karna chahiye. Is seva kya hota hai? What do you mean? How do you serve? And you keep saying, Rashtra Seva hona chahiye. He even says the national ideals of India have to be Seva and Tyag. What powerful way of looking at it. Service and renunciation. Renunci renunciation of what? Not all the physical comforts alone. Something deeper. And only a man exercising leadership can ever understand and appreciate the depth of renunciation, Swamiji said. It is not renunciation of physical comfort as most people think. When I went into the forest and lived with the tribals, a lot of people told me, oh, great sacrifice. I don't think that is sacrifice. The real challenge comes when society recognizes you, when society applauds you, society gives you awards. And can you renounce the egoistic growth that is happening from within you? Can you renounce those ideas of I and mine? That is the real tyag that Swami Vivekananda speaks about. So service is not giving up something great. Service is giving up the spirit of I itself. And I think that is a powerful, that is great leadership. So coming back to this question, this devotees asked, the disciples of Vivekananda asked him, tell us, please help us understand. Seva to karenge. Lekin how do we understand it? How do we get ourselves ready for seva? How do you start out on this journey? How do you bring out this leadership to emerge from within us? Because the power within us is something Vivekananda was very clear about. And Swamiji had a very simplistic answer. And we all need to understand this because I, I'm like I said, this is all, maybe I'm just using words to describe it, but I'm sure every one of you in this space at, at different points of time experience the power of what I'm talking. And it, because you relate to that experience, I can speak a little more freely about all this. Swamiji says, all you need, you don't need something extraordinary. You only, and he was great in English. So he uses the English words and says, 3H is all you need. And I think the journey of leadership in the social space, in the service sector, begins with understanding this 3H. The first H is the heart to feel. Bhavana. Bhavana both jaruri hai, both important be here. He was very clear, feel. Feel my children, feel, he says. Feel for the poor, the downtrodden, the marginalized. Feel till your heart, your head reels and your heart stops and you think you'll fall down dead. That kind of feeling you need. That is the kind of feeling we need to have for this mother India. That's the kind of feeling we need to have for every Indian today. That's the kind of feeling we need to have to a rural COVID patient as much as to an urban patient. That's the kind of feeling we need to have to the migrant laborer who's suffering without food some days. That's the kind of feeling we need to have to the elderly mother who's lost a 20 year old son and is struggling to make her ends meet. These are the kind of people who Seva International touches their lives in so many different ways. And that feeling is the beginning of the journey. But Tommy was very clear. 
feeling is a very incomplete process of understanding seva see feeling is the beginning point of seva so we must all understand the mere feeling is of no use mere good intentions of are no use to anybody and vivekananda understood this much better than all of us so he says and feeling is such a powerful emotion if you are clouded by your feeling that's also dangerous so bhavana itna jyada bhi ho sakta hai we can just do whatever we want and think we are doing good and that's a big danger look at the beauty of leadership in this concept it is not blindly responding to your emotions and doing what you think you should do but a measured response with emotion as a foundation that is the beauty of swami this vedantic thinking he says this should be followed by the head to think sochna chahiye is samay kya kar sakta hu main kya kya karna zaruri hai kaise kar sakta hu kiske sath ek kaam kar sakta hu so all this important question so what do i do who do i do it how do i do it how long do i do it and do it what spirit do i do it in so that thinking head to think not just feeling bad that india might have a problem of drinking water or sanitation or anemia in women but how do we solve it <sighs> several of us go to the second stage also we are very good in feeling and we have all solutions i meet a lot of people bahut log mujhe patra likhte hain every day i get one or two and they will say you know what i identified this i used to get one person who's to, who's been writing to me the last 6 to 9 months how we can solve the oxygen problems of the world but he will always end his email with main aapko aisa bata raha hu ki kyunki aap kya kar denge he is very clear i only tell you do it there are all like, lot of experts are there in our country they will always criticize and comment on everything we do anything you do they say hey, theek nahi hai is is tarah kar sakte hain ye isko modify karke is tarah kar dijiye they all advise you we all go through that so merely the heart to feel and head to think is not enough the real leadership journey is the next step also where swami ji says the hands to work so if you look at leadership today leadership literature talks of only three things today it talks of motivation it talks of strategy it talks of action motivation comes from the spirit of feeling that vivekananda said that's what inspires us this young man was motivated by the shivering of this young auto driver in the cold and then immediately the strategy is what can i do well that young, that auto driver needs a warm clothing everybody can say this i can also see a man shivering in the cold and say he needs a warm clothing but action where i have to, i have this warm jacket with me i give it to him so that is the beginning that's the beauty of leadership from service perspective not only do i learn how to feel but i'm intelligent enough it's not just blinded by emotion i'm intelligent enough to understand how to respond to this feeling of mine in the context in which i'm operating and act on it and that is the real spirit of karma yoga beginning of the spirit of karma yoga correct i understand correctly how does it proceed and vivekananda himself explains this he says when you set out going on this good work all good work he says we go through three stages but only those following the spirit of leadership and understanding all this can really endure what the challenges of leadership throws at you so swami ji says all good work will go through three stages the first is ridicule haste hain log ye kya kar sakte hain what can they do the problem is so big you can't solve it covid virus gets mutated every day how can you handle this second wave happens third wave happens fourth wave happens how long can you keep doing this hey sab nahi ho sakta hai all kinds of things they will say ordinary man will feel so defeated he'll say hey nahi ho sakta he will go back home all of us go through this and there are times i have also felt like that that is where vivekananda and bhagavad gita comes to our rescue that is where satsang is so important what you are having today is neither a workshop nor a training nor a lecture by me this is a powerful opportunity for virtual satsang we are all people who wondering how to you know understand the spirit of service and contribute to this country's progress in our own ways and every small thing matters 
so we will all be ridiculed for it so many people have tried they have not succeeded why will you be able to succeed all sorts of things they will say and then swami ji says the next level people then say if you are still enduring if you are still able to persevere then the next stage comes the stage of opposition they will say dekhte hain kaise kar dete hain and they'll oppose ye nahi hona chahiye we'll oppose it we'll not allow you to do this swami ji says for this the real preparation is the practice of three p's and that is the embedded leadership practice i want to ask every seva volunteer to think about very three he is not saying become a doctor become an engineer become a specialist in seva do an msw and come here no swami ji simply says three p's purity patience perseverance without these three you won't be able to transcend these stages at the stage of ridicule itself will give up oh i can't face all this let me just run away from this i know when i was a young man people ridiculed me they said 19 years only sir me kya kar sakta hai it is fellow doesn't even have a mustache properly what can he go and serve in the forest i lived all my life in bangalore in an urban area i had never seen a village in my life i when i go to a village they said he will not last three days there is no toilet there is no food such a challenge there is no money but then people ridiculed me but how many says keep this mantra in your pocket purity patience perseverance you have to stand up and say come what may i will be pure i will not give up purity of thought word and deed sab tarah ka shuddhata hona chahiye vak shuddhata shravana shuddhata sochne ka shuddhata hona chahiye and then the next step how many says is patience we need lot of patience you know people expect a solution tomorrow human development as a product of service that we do doesn't happen in one day two days five days we work in flood relief in uttarakhand next year another flood comes everything is washed away all our good work just goes away we feel so defeated so frustrated we got to be patient we'll be able to rebuild again we have to persevere not give up come what may whatever the difficulty is say i will not give up eternally optimistic and somebody who believes in vivekananda cannot but be eternally optimistic and positive and these are qualities for leadership in the social sector without this we cannot survive so purity patience perseverance i will not give up if that is there we will be able to transcend the stage of ridicule go into the stage of opposition and still will persevere will not give up people will get tired of criticizing us i have been beaten up i have been arrested but you will not give up you will keep going on so people finally will say it chhodega nahi chhod do isko just ignore him but then they will all come around and say ye to acha kaam kar raha hai thoda to kuch support karenge so acceptance will come very fact that people invite me to speak people want me to share some of these experiences itself is a sign of acceptance so purity patience perseverance is non negotiable for a person in the, spirit, in the space of social work you cannot be here for a hobby it cannot be just a career it has to be a life's passion driven by that spirit of the heart to feel head to think and the hands to work and as we keep doing this there is a danger and that is where leadership comes in again ordinary people they may come up to this level and feel very good about themselves oh itna seva kar raha hu mai itna sara kuch acha kaam kar raha hu mai mai to bahut sacrifice karke aaya hu yahan i have studied this much i went to harvard i went there and i must be great you know we all go through this i can tell you my own life i don't know about others but my own personal life we all fall into the trap of believing that i am doing it my i is become so strong people start telling oh to you must be a great guy people write uh, i still remember one former chief minister wrote my biography you will be thinking oh i must be really good at this why he write about me slowly we forget ye seva kyu kar raha hu we forget the complete spirit of what is driving us what are the purpose of service and we fall into the trap of believing that i am very important be doing this service and tommy wake on the wants about it he is extraordinary in his thinking and he says it is not about standing on a pedestal and saying here my poor man take my five cents 
don't think you're extraordinary in doing something for the poor consider yourself extraordinarily privileged that you've got an opportunity to serve the poor look at the leadership thinking behind this in so many these words you know this, this sense of i is such a very powerful disease bahut bada problem hai sab logon ke liye especially seva kshetra mein when you are in the spirit of corporate work etc several of you might have given up corporate careers to be here if you just go there you work the bottom line is clear earning money you go do your jobs and then everything is done and you come back home and go to sleep but in the service world when you start believing you're changing this world you're doing good it goes into your head and after some time you start feeling you're indispensable for this world to survive in a world where doing good itself is celebrated so many times and then you people talk about you people say itna acha kaam kar raha hai kitna tyag karke us jungle mein chale gaya all this kind of words come in and you feel oh i must be somebody very good and without our knowledge we fall into the trap which which makes the leadership that we have accumulated till then to dissipate away over mind and this is where so many reminds us now i went through this myself and i thought oh i must be a great man i must be doing all this i have built hospital schools thousands of people are benefiting from my work indeed it was be great work but then so many also writes all this and i i believe that this sentence was written for somebody like me because it's so powerful he says and it's very contextually relevant to me because most of my work at that time was along the banks of a river so he writes all the hospitals you build all the schools you construct can crumble to dust in one earthquake or get washed away in one cyclone or flood so don't ever think that you're extraordinary doing all this and he gives a very simple hum- humbling lesson he says the cow which gave birth to a calf is already been programmed to feed the cow calf milk god has already taken care of all the program it is just that the cow is incidental to the calf getting milk the cow cannot think without me the calf cannot get milk and this is the most powerful message for people in the service sector if you are really allowing the leadership to emerge from inside you will make sure that you will not say i am the cow giving milk to this calf you will understand that we are all instruments in this act of service we are all instruments and belong to the you know we are all privileged to be belonging to the design of the higher divine force which is using us to ensure that people are taken care of look at this beautiful message and this is where the bhagavad gita's real message of karmanya vadika raste comes out it is not about simply saying i'll do my actions and not forget about the fruits it's about doing your actions without any worry about the consequences of whether the poor will benefit whether he'll really do good you know we all start we all belong to the world a generation where you have to measure everything and i am also a product of the same generation i also measure but measurement is not to validate and say i am doing good let's not get into the trap measurement is not to find out how much of good we did measurement is to reassure us that we are not wasting public money all that is important but it cannot go to our head and say oh it must i am really doing good i must be really i'm using this money wisely it is not about the i it is about the good that is happening so be and make when vivekananda says we have to be this this extraordinary leader and create this extraordinary seva sevartis around us all the sevaks around us who believe in this spirit and that is what is what our organization should start doing and i remember a very nice uh, many of you might have seen this attend by a movie and you know gandhi when you read his life history i forget the lady's name she was a reporter in the life magazine i'm not even sure if life magazine is still there maybe it's all closed down now it is a photo magazine a photo journal and she used to come every year to meet gandhi and she became a fan of mahatma gandhi and one day gandhi is under house arrest kasturba has just passed away and gandhi is doing his charaka and this lady comes meets him starts talking to him and says no each time i come back i learn so much from you gandhi last time i came the people of your country and we still not got our independence they were all calling you bapu already they are calling him father he was not called father of the nation but he was called father bapu and then 
this year i am looking around people are calling him mahatma the great man so she asks gandhi aapko kaise lagta hai how do you feel being called bapu is one thing but mahatma the great man the exalted one oh it must be a great feeling and gandhi in his own classical style in his own humorous way says oh is it wonderful they calling me mahatma very nice to know he says they can call me whatever they want as long as what they call me doesn't go into my head he says they can think i am the mahatma but the problem will come when i start thinking i am the mahatma theek hai jana can can others switch or keep the speakers in the microphone in mute it will help because there's a lot of background noise thank you so much so look at gandhi's beautiful way of expressing as long as others think i am mahatma i am not worried it is their problem but the real problem will come when i start believing i am the mahatma that is the spirit of social work never ever believe i am doing good never ever believe i am engaged in seva kshetra seva karya kar raha hu bhai no it is getting done through me that is what vivekananda said yeah sab acha hai kaam mai kar raha hu is a dangerous belief it is getting done through me is the real spirit of karma yoga or the bhagavad gita and this is the spirit of leadership that some of us spoke about so how does leadership look how do we as people in this space define leadership in the space not like the way the corporate world or others are defining it it is not about standing out there strategizing and say come on i have a vision follow me but in a very simplistic way very specifically for this space sector of social world i would define leadership simply as something where it's all about action right i have to act my whole like motivation strategy action hard to feel head to think and hands to work so i believe the journey starts beginning first part of the journey is understanding ourselves why am i here what am i doing is it really useful for me to be doing all this why am i doing all this kyon kar raha hu aur sab kuch so the questions you ask of yourself understanding the self is the first step in this emergence of leadership in this space of social work and the second step is understanding others around me who are these people around me should we just say they are citizens of this country they are fellow brothers and sisters of our nation are they all people inseparable part of the humanity that i see is inseparable from me itself so understanding self is the first level understanding others around me and seva doesn't simply stop with this understanding bhavna and connects the bhavna connects the emotions connect the self and the others understanding both of us gets us to appreciation of the context in which you are operating but then understanding the actions that connect the self to the others is the real journey of seva so the beginning of seva is understanding myself the next step is understanding others around me whether it's a child not going to school whether it's a patient who needs health care understanding the actions that connect me the self to the others what can i do to do solve this problem in the context in which i am operating that is a leadership action that we need to keep in mind and vivekananda explains this so beautifully because each of us can get confused and think oh this is such important work such big great work i don't know what to do we can get paralyzed by imagining the problem to be so big that we feel helpless in wanting to solve it when Many of us go through this, and that's how we withdraw. And Swami Ji has such a beautiful way of resolving this. He says, "Don't worry about all these big things. Simplistically ask yourself, what is the first level of seva I can do? What is the first level of service I can do? That for that he says is physical service, sharirik seva. Is sharir ko kya kar sakto? The other physical body. What can I do with this physical body? So understand your physical body and say, with this physical body." मैं क्या कर सकता हूं दैट अदर फिजिकल बॉडी वेरी सिंपलिस्टिक यू डोंट हैव टू थिंक अद्वैतिक एंड से दे आर ऑल वन एंड ऑल दैट वी गेट लॉस्ट इन ऑल दैट ही सेड ऑल दैट इज ऑल नॉनसेंस बिगिन स्मॉल व्हाट कैन आई विद दिस बॉडी डू फॉर दिस बॉडी द अदर दैट आई एम सीइंग दैट फेलोस हंगरी गिव हिम फूड दैट फेलोस नो क्लोथ्स गिव हिम क्लोथ्स दिस यंग बॉय इन दिल्ली दैट्स व्हाट ही डिड गिव द जैकेट टू दिस ऑटो ड्राइवर व्हाट कैन आई डू टू दिस बॉडी and then he says as you evolve as you continue on this journey of leadership as you continue to understand purity patience perseverance you start going deeper into the seva and that is when the shift happens and you say 
next level of service that is adhyat that, that is baudhik seva intellectual service so from the physical you move on to the intellectual all our hospitals old age homes anathalayas all those level of service is physical for the body the next level is baudhik schools awareness a lot of work that seva is doing hundreds and thousands of boys to gain uh, children are across the country boys and girls that you have been supporting is a baudhik seva the educational service that you do and that's also after some time you will start feeling restless what is this every day morning to evening i'm doing the same thing is this enough should i do something more we all go through this questions each one of us will go through this morning to evening the same thing what is the joy in this i'm only in the same school i'm running the same children come to me next till only the names change aaj to ram hai kal to sham ho jayega that's all but the seva is the same so we all get fatigue it can happen to every one of us we all go through the cycles and then swami ji says if you do do it as help you will go through this if you do it as i am doing it you will go through this but if you go to the next level swami ji says adhyatmik seva and for a long time i thought we have to be doing adhyatmik seva to the others but then i realized in my own journey adhyatmik seva is not for others but by doing the sharirik and baudhik seva without any expectation of a return without any judgment without any attitude of transaction in it you are actually ending up doing adhyatmik seva for yourself and your spiritual journey starts your inner revolution starts and that to me is the real more, the most powerful expression of leadership and that is why i strongly believe leadership is a spiritual journey it's a spiritual activity it is a sadhana and that is why it is not for everybody many of us are in the social work space we are all doing social service but we may never do it in the spirit of yoga we are all doing karma we are all nice people good people karma to kar rahe hain agar isko karma yoga banna chahiye badalna chahiye then we have to think about this attitude of it being a sadhana spiritual journey and that is the exact thing that tom vivekananda called us to do and when you start doing this a lot of us will be doing it how do you recognize such people i have found that we all evolve as our inner nature evolves we can easily recognize such people and eight qualities my own research hopefully i'll be able to write a book soon on this eight powerful qualities come manifest itself and all these are vedantic qualities either described in our vedas or in different parts of upanishads or in the bhagavad gita i'll just put it together the first quality is compassion extraordinarily compassionate will become we will see humanity is inseparable from us and we start responding to it compassion is not sympathy it is not mere empathy also it is a combination of passionate act and action the so passionate action manifesting as passionate action for the other the self manifesting itself as passionate action for the others is in my view compassion the second quality will start manifesting this faith and hope enormous faith vivekananda says if you do not have faith in yourself it is gone it's useless you might have faith in the 33000 crore gods you have created for yourself but if you do not have faith in yourself you are an atheist he says enormous faith in ourselves i can do this i strongly believe i can solve this problem we need to start off with that belief without getting lost in the i with the conviction and the confidence that i can be useful to society this purpose of mine for life is really something which i can contribute to something meaningfully and hope that it will actually happen because many of us have become so hopeless we live in a world of such negativism kuch nahi hoga ye sab vyarth hai this is all useless we should not be indulging ourselves in this wastage of time resources all these kind of questions will come a lot of people will tell me what i have been doing for 35 36 years when they read, read your cv it looks nice but somebody can say what are you doing for 36 years what have you achieved we all can easily dismiss it away but hope that tomorrow will be better than today tomorrow this service seva will manifest itself in better future for the whole country not for me but not with that you don't do it because of that but you will always be hopeful third is the quality of positivism enormous sakaratmak thinking you will always be positive vivekananda says 
Positivism is such a powerful emotion. He says, in the morning, if you get up and you're sulking and you're negative, don't leave the room, he says. You start spreading your negativity. That is why satsang is so important. Sad vichar, sad bhavnai, all these are so important for us. In our culture, that's part of our embedded DNA of this country. We need to encourage it. The fourth, the spirit of service. Look at the beauty. Seva ka art enaiya ki sahayata it's different. Sahayata is different. Seva is different. The Western understanding is help. The moment I do something, I drop a pen, somebody will pick it up and give it to me. I say, thank you. I'm not saying we should not thank. But there's a transactional attitude in the doer as well as in the person who gets it done for himself. But Seva goes beyond it. If you do it in the spirit I described as an exercise of leadership in the space, I would say you do it because you do it unconditionally, you do it with love. You do it with no expectation of any kind. And that is the powerful seva. Not even the expectation of spiritual growth. Even that is not seva. Even that is selfish. Completely unselfish. This Vivekananda says selfishness is sin. And people in this journey of recognizing the understanding of leadership through social work should understand. Even an iota. And we will all be selfish. Nothing wrong. I have been so many times looking at myself, but that is an opportunity for you not to sit back and say I'm useless, but to reinvigorate yourself and say, I will not allow it the next time to happen to me. So recharging yourself. So compassion, faith and hope, spirit of service, spirit of uh, positivism, sense of positivism, and then the spirit of Self-enquiry, constantly like understanding self, understanding others is the journey of self-enquiry. That is a spirituality. Enormous fearlessness. Vivekananda says, Abhihi, Abhihi, Abhihi. He says, if one powerful message comes out of the Rig Veda, it is the spirit of Abhihi. We need to be fearless. Fearlessness is not courage. Courage is negotiating with the fears inside you. Fearlessness is such a powerful Indian concept. You know, such a deep Bharatiya Soch hai. We are transcending the very nature of fear itself, transcending the concept of fear itself. That is fearlessness. And we'll start manifesting it as we start engaging in this activity of unconditional self selfless seva. And then somebody says, you know, as we grow, sense of humor, we'll start laughing a lot. We will not laugh at people and their suffering. We will laugh with people. Will bring joy wherever we go. And finally, the spirit of mindfulness. So we will be mindful of all these concepts, whether we are exercising all this, whether we are really living all this, whether we are really practicing this in the spirit. And when that mindfulness is what starts the journey of the spirituality I spoke about, keeps reminding us this is a sadhana. This is not, not merely for his welfare or for my evolution. But it is a process of the enormous sadhana where I finally realize there is no self and no other. There is no separation. There is no I the doer and he the getting it done. There is no instrument or the instrumentality. Finally, hopefully each of us will go through that enormous joy of recognizing that spirit of oneness, oneness of mankind, oneness of humanity. So true emergence of leadership should lead us towards this powerful Advaitic experience of just being one with everything. And when we reach that, there's neither the Seva nor the Sevak, nor the Sevak Khetra or Seva Karya. Everything becomes one beautiful, enormously powerful spiritual experience. And hoping that each one of us in this journey of Seva, we all go through this and reach that stage, reach that space and Organizations like Seva International are platforms, are platforms which give us this opportunity, are platforms which are created in today's world of Yavahar because we have to follow the structures, we have to follow organizational requirements. But let's not get stuck in the organizational requirements, but use these as enormously great opportunities that we have. It's powerful platforms that are existing for us pure platforms that we have created for ourselves to start out on this journey, to recognize this power of seva, to start kickstart the inner urge and inner evolution that we all need to do.
So learn to how this inner nature can express itself as external seva. The power of the inner potential manifesting the seva to the world. And together, let's all learn how to make this world a great place. So thank you all so much for this wonderful opportunity for sharing all this thought with all of you.